Happy Thursday, everybody. I'm sorry I'm getting up here so late, which is 11.01. Um, happy the the 4th. Uh, I'm so sorry. I fell asleep this evening and, did, and didn't even wake up because I had planned to watch uh, the game, the Lakers versus Golden State Warriors. But I actually got a chance to see it. And baby, if I tell you, the Lakers versus the Golden State Warriors, baby, the Golden State Warriors aired them out. It was a good video and, and a good show. I thought, you know, like I just said, I thought this would be a good video because it was a good show. Uh, they came back and they the people said it was a game. I think I said game three or whatever, and it's supposed to air Saturday at seven thirty. I guess it's supposed to be good. I don't know. I'm you know, Golden State Warriors is my team, so I'm really looking for a good time. That, to watch it and hoping that they win. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to do a, another video about the Golden State Warriors, but it, it just seems so interest, interest that the Golden State Warriors versus the Lakers. You know, the Lakers have been around for years and years to come, but they also said the Golden State Warriors have been around from years and years to come. And from what I understand, the Golden State Warriors have won 170 uh, games against the Lakers. And I don't know how many uh, that the Lakers uh, ran, but I know ran or won, I'm sorry, uh, one, I mean, but I do know there was, they came out tonight and they tried to tarnish the, uh, Golden State Warriors and it wasn't working. Sorry. Golden State Warriors wasn't having it. They came back in the second quarter to let them know that we still here. Like I told y'all before. I think when I did this video, I I don't know if I did uh to, uh told y'all this. I do not like uh LeBron James. I'd always said to myself that the Warriors was lazy. I always said to myself they they just sorry, you know they 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 don't know. They don't know how to play the game, I think. So, at the end of the day, I want to say this. Uh, the Lakers came out on the four, uh, first hand, you know, trying to score. And at first, I thought, well, here we go. But the Golden State Warriors let them have it. And I think the biggest part of the Golden State Warriors is you have to be consistent if you play in the Golden State Warriors because they're going to let you have it. Because back in uh in the second quarter, they came up higher and higher and higher to let them know, now we still here. To let them know, we still here and we're not going nowhere. So... Um, it was a win for the Golden State Warriors. I enjoyed watching it. Uh, oh, and also, Steph Corey, his wife, Alicia Corey, she was there at his game, and um, his daddy was there. I didn't, uh, They didn't show nothing about his mama, but I want to say this. From what I hear, allegedly, uh, for TMZ and the tabloids and everything on YouTube, what I heard was Steph Corey, 
allegedly, daddy had broke up with his mama, allegedly, and his mama had broke up with the daddy, allegedly, and she, just like he got him a new boo, she got her a new boo. And I was like, wow. You know, even the celebrities have problems. You know what I'm saying? The celebrity parents have problems. So you never realize what you what you're going through. So you never realize what they're going through because at the end of the day, you think their life is so much more than your life. So much positive than your life. And at the end of the day, you realize that their life is just like yours. You lead the same life is they live the same life. And what I mean by that is a lot of people don't understand what I'm saying is that they have problems just like you. You know, they have problems like you. They have money problems. They have a problem with their wives or they have problems with their husbands. They have basically problems like you. You understand what I'm saying? Um. So... Just because you make a lot of money and just because you're a superstar or you're a celebrity, that doesn't mean that you have or you don't have a lot of problems. It just means that you have a lot of money. That's all you have. I want to say this. I, I know I paused a while ago. And I'm sorry. I want to say this. Money can't buy you love. Money can't buy you respect. Money can't buy you friends. You can spend money on material things. But that's not going to last long. Because if anything happens to you, you can't take the material things to heaven or hell. And I, I, I always say that when I have problems, I always say that while I'm trying to do right, the devil's always in my ear. Speaking, do this, do this, do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be the righteous person that you are. You know, do this. Do this. And you have to take up on when God say, don't do something. Because it's going to say harm to you. And I believe it. Because at first, I didn't believe it. But now I believe it because at the end of the day, I, um... I um been through a lot. I've been through a lot. Um, can I say it's wisdom that I've been through? No, I'ma just say it's challenges that I've been through. I'ma say the challenges of my life have made me stronger and have made me the person who I am. Now do I trust anybody? It's hard for me to trust anybody now because what has happened to me, you know, is do I have any people that's loyal to me? I do. I have one person that loyal to me beside my family, which is my gay child. He's loyal to me. He respects me. He do what I ask him to do, you know. And if you got anybody knows or I told y'all in this video. I um recently became paralyzed and confined to the bed, you know. So I can't do for myself like I used to could do. 
I only can just sit in this bed and ask somebody else to do this or ask somebody to do that. Be confined to the bed. Is that the best thing? No. It takes away my life. Do you want to uh, do I want more for my life? Yeah, I want my having more for my life. Everybody want more for their life. But do we do the things to get more for our life? I don't necessarily think that we do. I think we just look at it as when we want more for our life, I think it's as they, that we feel like we want something handed out to us instead of going out there and get it. And the one thing I want to say, if you're a go-getter, you can get anything that you want to, but it's up to you. It's not up to nobody else for you to go get and desire the things that you want. And I'm not just saying with material things. I'm saying with things at all and things that persist to you. So do I think it's right to do certain things like disrespect your so-called friends or disrespect your peers, I don't think it's right. You know, I think everybody should respect each other. And I that's why I come in this world and I say, don't nobody respect nobody no more. You understand what I'm saying? Like back in the day when I came out being gay, I think I was like 15, maybe 16. Uh, I... I remember my mama called me in her house with an, another man, with a man. And when we was growing up, you had gay friends and stuff. You know, um, they they was a sort of like on the world of population. And they was boosting, with on selling it and doing everything else. And they taught me how to hustle uh, because back then, my mom didn't accept who I was. She didn't start to accept who I was till later on in life. So that's that's why I'm saying you come full circle with this, this situation where everything is different now. You understand what I'm saying? When these people come out being gay, People get disrespected and the gays disrespect them as well. When I feel like if you the person that you are, don't disrespect that person. You know, because at the end of the day, God gonna take care of you. Just do what you're supposed to do for you. And remain kind to other people and remain respectful. Because if you disrespectful, nothing's going to come of it. You know, you're going to always have problems, you know. And I'm going to tell you how something else. One thing I had told this person, if you have a past, you can't run for your past. It don't matter how you moving on to the future. You can't run to your past. That's one of the things I learned. You can't run from your past. Like, my mom used to tell me when I used to run from state to state, I was just say, I just can't deal with this. It was just too much. And I think that was one of the reasons why God slowed me down. Because at the end of the day, I was running from my past. And like my mom used to tell me, you can't keep running from your past because it's still going to be there wherever you go. And so I learned the hard way, of course. 
God told me and said, okay, you want to run from your past? I'm going to have to slow you down. You know, and then another thing, I wasn't listening to God. I wasn't listening to what he had to say. And I want to say this. I remember me being locked up in prison behind a dope case. And I told God that if he let me out of, out of this prison, that I was going to do right by him and don't sell no dope. Well, it didn't happen like that. I, I was a disobedient child, and I did what I wanted to do, despite what God wanted me to do, and despite with the issues that I had. I didn't want to listen. I was being a disobedient child. You know what I'm saying? I even came to the point to a full circle to where when I got out of prison, I met this this homosexual and we became good friends and we was like we was the best of friends we did everything together we went shopping together once we went we just went to the mall together and we just enjoyed life we went out to eat together went to the clubs together you know we had men and boys together you know we we enjoyed life we really did and the day i found out that she had passed away or he had passed away, however you want to see it, because we we got to see it because of these pronouns. But I was just hurt. I didn't know what to do. I was just hurt because I feel like a part of my, oh, part of my heart was just broken. And I didn't start to accept that later on after he passed away, I went back to prison because I didn't know how to accept his death. Only thing I knew was that I had this best friend and he passed away and that I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I was in a bad place. I was in a dark place in my life. And people weren't so nice to me. People was rude to me. And this guy, which I call my best friend, he knew my whole family. He knew my mama all the way down to my aunt. They talk about him today, how good he was to me and for me. And if he found out that the things I was going through, even with my ex or even with my ex best friends, he'll be so angry with me. He, he will get on me and say, you know better than let these people use you. But one thing I want to say is his ex, which is a... Uh, my ex best friend, they was cousins. They were cousins. And I think I didn't find out about that till later on in life. But her, her cousin, man, was something else. Allegedly, from what I understand, her cousin mean knocked out his teeth. I'm a lot of things, y'all know that. I talk about life and I talk about things I have been through. But in reality, if a man put raise his hand up to me, he better call his mama and tell her that mama, I'm signing my death certificate because that's what he'll be, be signing. Because I remember me and my ex got into it. 
That's how we got into it. Wow. We was always fighting. And I got tired and I said, I ain't finna keep being in this toxic relationship. So even though that he got mad, I did something that I knew was best for me. I left the relationship. Because I got tired of relationship. Because I got tired of being disres dis disrespected. I was being lower than a relationship. But the person wasn't being lower to me. And I had to start to fall out of the relationship. So I feel like if you fall out of something, then the best thing for you to do is leave that person and start doing what you know best, loving yourself and respecting yourself and be with yourself so you rise to the top and you have some growth. And I've been by myself for three years now. I ain't been in no type of relationship. I ain't been really, really dating nobody because I've been wanting to work on myself before I got sick. But even now, if I was to meet a guy and he said he respect from what I'm going for and he respect me, I, all he, he, he want to do is love me and be there for me. I don't even know if that's possible because I don't know how to love or how to accept love coming from me, coming from that person or coming to me. I know how to love that person, but I don't know how to receive the love from them. I know what y'all saying, that's sad, but it's true. I can only be true about certain things. Um, beside this I'm talking about, I want to tell y'all, hopefully I have my marriage child. I want to say something. I don't want you to judge me. I told my ex about this, this friend, and he agreed to help me, you know, and I'm just hoping y'all he not wanting something bad in return. I'm just hoping he helped me with this brand and everything. I know what y'all saying, but why are you trying to get it for free? No, I'm not trying to get it for free. I told my ex I would pay him back. I just didn't tell him when I'm going to pay him back, but I told him I will pay you back. You know, because I don't got to that place where I'll be 50 years old in a couple of months. And I, I don't feel like doing the argument. And I don't feel like uh, disagreeing with nobody. I'm nice. And that's what I want to be. That's nice. So um, I'm just uh it's trying to be and just live my life. It's the best of my knowledge. Well, I have already been over a minute to say I wanted to record this video. So I'm going to get off of this video. And I hope y'all have a nice night. Good night.